In preparation for the introducing our next speaker, uh, Christian and I were fighting a little bit about who gets to introduce him because we've both known him for a really long time. So um, we decided to both say something about him. Did you know that Martin actually studied architecture? He could have been building buildings. Instead, he builds crazy awesome Neos things. And weirdly named packages. <laughs> so if you ever looked at Sideguys packages, that's the person you ask why, why the name is so strange. Um, it's always amazing to see those. Yeah. Martin, come up, please. Come, come here. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. And now, dazzle us. Let's see. Um, hello, Neos Conference. Today I'm talking about uh, fusion forms again. Um, talked about that two years ago already. Uh, but today I will focus on extensibility. I will start with a short recap about the NEOS Fusion Form package and the NEOS Fusion Form runtime. After that, there will be a short demo of the Sidegeist Paper Tiger package we just released and which uses pretty much every extension point in NEOS Fusion Forms to create a form builder that allows editors to define their own forms and to define what is to be done after the form was submitted. After that, we will take a look at all the extension points used in there to give you an understanding what you can do with the Paper Tiger package or what you can do if you extend Fusion Forms on your own. First, NEOS Fusion Forms. The main prototype in the NEOS Fusion Form package is obviously the form. And the main thing you will do with the form is to specify where it is submitted to, which is the form target action. And that usually refers to a flow controller action. The second thing you will specify with the form prototype is which data is to be modified. Um, which may be objects or JSON structures or whatever. And that's it. And the form is responsible for rendering a form tag. And this pretty much is it. Not really, because there are some hidden things which are non-obvious. And the form is also responsible for rendering some hidden information, like which are the identifiers of the object are just modified. They are there's no control which selects object identifier. And where is this form submitted from? Whenever a flow controller on the other end decides the data was not valid and wants to send you back, he needs this information as well. So the form also creates some hidden fields with the referral information. The last thing the form prototype renders is the trusted properties field, which is a signed data structure that tells the NEOS property mapper, which data is actually created by a valid form and can be handled by the property mapper on the receiving end. There is also a bunch of prototypes which create the actual form control elements. In this case, it is an input. And all those elements allow you to specify which part of the data is to be modified from this element. And of course, they also allow you to specify some other attributes. Those prototypes also have some other responsibilities. They are responsible for, of course, rendering an input tag, but that is the obvious part. They are also responsible for fetching the existing data from the data that is bound to the form. And they are responsible for re-rendering the data if you submitted the form, a validator kicked in and sent you back. In between those two prototypes, there is a field container, which is optional. And a field container allows you to specify the customer name, or not the, case, the field name. And uh, if you do that, the controls inside will make use of this field already. So you, have to, you, have, you do not have to define it twice. But also, the container is responsible for rendering a label and also to create a unified error rendering that you can use for every control you may want to use. On top of this, there are the runtime forms. And the most common um, 
iteration of them uh, is the single step process form. Um, the runtime form consists mainly of the runtime form prototype, which has two main properties. First, the process. And the process is a thing that acquires data until it is satisfied. And once it is satisfied, the action is triggered to do something with the data. Um, the process internally has two parts. First is content, maybe AFX, maybe some component or something else. And the content is what is actually the form body, um, mainly the same as in uh, the form example I showed before. And the second thing is the schema. And a schema combines two things. It defines what type is to be expected on the receiving end and which validators are to be applied. So that is the main thing. And you can define a schema. So the schema property itself is already of type schema collection. And the schema collection allows you to specify the schema for each single property in the form. As you see, the uh, runtime forms have a separation of the definition of rendering and validation, which is different from what you may be used to from other form frameworks or the old flow form framework, but that is important to allow custom rendering. So the form body in the content can be whatever you like. You do not have to interfere with the form runtime to define it in any way. You can do everything what you can do with Fusion for uh, the content of a runtime form. There is a second variant of the um, runtime form process, which is the multi-step process. And the multi-step process allows you to specify a bunch of single-step processes which are rendered one after another until every single process is satisfied, and then the action is uh, kicked. I personally think this whole thing could be an anti-pattern, not because of the implementation. It mostly works. But I think it is a really bad pattern UX-wise. If your data is so complex that you need multiple forms, you probably should do something else should create a dialog. And uh, in that case, so what I would do instead of creating a multi-step form, I would create a single-step process, create a dialog component that can help the user much better to fill out the form correctly. And afterwards, there is a schema and there is an action, but not simply show one form after another. That is usually very bad user experience. There are multiple ways to extend Fusion Forms, and the most obvious one is to create custom field types. So you can use Fusion for that. And also a common way to extend Fusion Forms is to replace the label renderer and the error renderer that are used inside the field containers. You will usually be able to use the default field container, but I understand if the label renderer or the error rendering does not suit you, so just replace it. There are also a bunch of PHP interfaces. The most usual one to extend is the action interface. So that is what you use to define what is to be done with the data. It is a very simple interface with a single method. Um, there is a schema interface, which is mainly a combination of the type converter interface and the validator interface from the flow package. There is also a process interface. But uh, that is mainly the commonality of the single-step form and the multi-step form. And uh, I would be curious if someone comes up with a use case for a custom implementation, but I have not seen any yet. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. OK. There is quite a bit of documentation about NEOS Fusion form, and this is just a very brief recap. Um, there is an example in NEOS demo. 
There are some arti articles in docsneos.io, and the package on GitHub has some documentation itself. And there is a talk from Neos Online Con 2021, uh, which explains all this in much more detail, so you may want to look it up. But now, let's take a look what we can build from it. Um, in this case, I will show you the Sidegas Paper Tiger uh, package, which is a custom form builder for Neos CMS. But it's not the first one. There have been previous packages which did pretty much the same or tried to do the same. Uh, the, most mo the most notable one is the Neos Fusion Form Builder. And on top of that, there is even a Neos Form Builder Fusion Renderer package, um, which works. Uh, it is built on the classic form framework for Flow. And um, it, I do not like interacting with it that much, and I do not like the node structure it creates. And there are also other packages. I personally was involved with uh, Package Factory Atomic Fusion Forms, which never made it to version one. And, uh, but there were other ex uh, experiments uh, as well. And most of them had some things in common, which I personally don't like. Um, it was quite difficult to use generic contents from Neos inside of a form. So just add an image here or a text there. And it was difficult to use grids inside of forms. It was always some engineering required. And of course, custom rendering has always been cumbersome. Also, the node structures uh, that were used by Neos Fusion Form and all the other experiments were quite deeply nested and created a really uh, non-trivial structure in the uh, node tree, so editors easily got confused. So that's what I wanted to make better. Let's take a look what I came up with. And I thought about making an online uh, a demonstration on stage, but that usually ends in disaster. <laughs> so what I did instead, I did a screen recording, and now I have to synchronize it. So let's see how that goes. First, the main thing you want to see is uh, the form builder, which is content. And if you insert it, you get form content and the follow-up actions. In the content, there is some generic Neos content, but also there are control elements and some special elements as well. We start with a headline, and today we want to create a hacker registration form. First thing we need is a single text input, and we say we need a name, and the label for that is hacker name, and obviously this one is required. For a hacker name, we have some rules, Let's say it can be 128 characters, and we only allow lowercase characters and numbers. So since this is not trivial and non-obvious, we also add a little text to explain the users what kind of data we expect. And we continue. The second thing we have to know about hackers is which sci-fi universe they originate from. So. Next thing is we want to know sci-fi universe. And since this is a drop-down, we need some options. And here we define the first option is Star Wars. And if we say Star Wars, second option obviously is Star Trek. So that's it. Um, maybe. Some hackers cannot decide where they originate from, so we add an empty option. OK, that works, but obviously I think one has to decide, so drop down is not the best way. Let's change it to a radio. And OK, now I'm satisfied. So another one, 
a file upload. Let's have an avatar image. And for that, we only accept JPEG and it may be 100 kilobyte maximum. And since we want to help our users, we want to customize the error message, sometimes the stuff Flow says or the validators say is not very user friendly, so a custom message it is. And also, if there are special rules that cannot be guessed, we add a text and a little description. Lastly, we want to annoy the hackers a little and add a capture. And a honeypot, which is validated to be empty. And well, almost ready. Let's create a submit button. And we're almost done. So submit, and the label is register as Neos Hacker. So that's it for the content of the form. Next thing we want is to define what is done with the data once the form is submitted. Also here, go to the section follow up actions and create a new node. And we already have show message, first thing. And we want to say thank you for reg registration. And in here, we can place a text and we can have placeholders and curly braces which are referring to the identifiers of the fields we just defined. So since we want to have multiple things to happen, we also want to send an email. So for that, we need a subject and define the email text. In there, the placeholders are replaced as well, but you can control which fields are handled with uh, placeholders. And we need a recipient address and a sender address. So last thing we want is we want to attach all the uploaded files to the sent email to make use of the submitted avatar images. So that's it all for the backend side, can publish it now, and let's take a look at the front end. In there, no surprise, form looks like what we just created. And uh, I inserted a hacker name which is intentionally wrong. I used an uppercase character which is not allowed, so if I try to submit it, the front end validation kicks in and prevents me from Submitting it, if I change this to lowercase, it is now allowed, and now I select an avatar image, which is slightly larger than allowed. And so this is 160 kilobyte. Submit. And now we see the custom error message, so that way you can easily help your users and allow editors to define which messages are to be shown, which is usually cumbersome if you're dealing with classic flow validators. And here we see the welcome message with the inserted data. And in the mail catcher, we see an email was sent. Also, text was replaced. And we have an image in the uh, attachments. So that's it for the demo. Now let's take a look at the OID details. How was this created on top of Fusion Forms and how can you make use of it and extend it to your own use case? First of all, of course, it is a node type and it is uh, a node type that has two child nodes. First one is a field collection 
And the field collection is a collection that allows all nodes which have the field constraint attached to them, which is by default all the field prototypes I just showed you. And, um, but you can also use the constraint to allow other contents, like default contents, in the field collection. There is also an action collection, which works pretty much the same and allows all nodes that are of the action constraint. So, fusion-wise, it is a NEOS NEOS component, and it is just a runtime form. And the things that were replaced to create the uh, Paper Tiger form or dynamic form was the content, which is now a field collection renderer, which pretty much iterates over all contents in the field collection and triggers the flow renderer, very similar to the classic NEOS content collection renderer. There is a schema, which is now a field collection schema, so it iterates, or it does not iterate over the field collection, it looks for all nodes below the field collection that are of type field, um, which allows you to use grids and collections and stuff like that in there. So the schema will find everything below, uh, and uh, regardless what the structure of your nodes below the uh, actual field collection is. Last thing, the action, which is now an action collection renderer that will iterate over all defined action nodes. So, how to make use of this for your own? The most simple case is just, yeah, I want to allow a text inside a form, and it does not get more, sim more simple than that. You just apply the field constraint to your node type. That's all you have to do, no adjustments to rendering, no further configuration is needed. It is just like what you would do to allow it in any other content collection. The second thing is defining a custom field. And to do that, you will create a node type, which is derived or has a supertype sidecast paper tiger field. And a co um, together with this node type, you have to specify two fusion prototypes. The first one, which is named just like the node type, is the fusion, type, fusion prototype which is responsible for rendering. And the second one you want to specify is the schema, which is named like the node type with the postfix.schema, and which is obviously responsible for defining the schema. So how does it look? For the email field, it is pretty much just the NEOS NEOS content component, and as a renderer, it uses the paper tiger field container, which does the magic for label rendering and stuff. And inside of that, just a form input with attributes type email. Uh, you can see that this one takes parts of the information from the node, so pretty much what you would expect in any NEOS renderer for a node type. The schema is also quite simple. Um, but in this case, it will not return a string or some HTML, but a schema object. So it is a component, and the renderer creates a schema object. And schema in this case defines it as a string, and it wants the email address validator applied. And also it decides on whether or not the required validation is needed by looking into the is required field as well. So the is required field is used on the front end side and on the back end side. Because front end validation and back end validation are two pair of shoes. Front end validation is a usability feature which helps users to fill out the form correctly. It is no security feature at all because front end validation can be circumvented at any time. So don't rely on that. Backend validation is what keeps your data sane. So always make sure you have both, which is quite cumbersome since front-end validation is already quite advanced nowadays. So what I usually do is I create the backend validation first and uh, just add the properties that control the front-end validation later after I tested the backend validation. <laughs> so. The second thing you likely want to define is a custom action, and to do that, 
you create a class which implements the action interface. The action interface is pretty simple. It uh, has a single method, which is called perform. So not much. And it also, if you extend it from the abstract action, uh, you have options which may be applied to your uh, action. To do it, to allow it to, for editors to create their actions on their own, you'll create a node type based on Zeitgeist Paper Tiger action. And for that, you also have to define two fusion prototypes. First one being a preview prototype, which is for editors in the backend to understand what this action will do. So it is to help editors understand what will be going on. And the second one is a definition, which is uh, what defines what will happen, so which configures the actual impl action implementation to do something. How does it look? Well, the preview does not get more simple than that. It just takes the configured message and shows it. It may get some com more information in there if, it's get more, if it gets more complicated, but it's really straightforward. Um, the definition is more interesting. The definition fetches also the data from the node type. And here you can see that there is a processor applied to the uh, message, the Zeitgeist Paper Tiger Action Data Template Processor. And this is what replaces the curly braces in the message before it is used to configure the message in the renderer. So that is a pattern that is used um, where you can control which properties that you later feed into your action are modified by applying um, curly brace or curly brace placeholder replacement. Um, the data template will also replace or will apply HTML special chars to the replaced data, so it is not that easy to insert nasty stuff there. So there are even more interesting things. And uh, I will not go into every detail in here because we have little time. Um, the capture field makes use of the Zeitgeist Fusion Form friendly capture package, which brings a, f uh, a capture field type you can use in any Fusion Form. So if you want to look up how to create a custom field type, this package may be interesting. And it also comes with a friendly capture validator. Um, the upload field uses the Zeitgeist Fusion Form upload package, uh, which alters two things regarding to the classic flow upload handling. It allows to support multiple uploads, and also it does not cache or it does not store the uh, submitted data in um, persistent resources and some content collection you later have to clean up. Uh, instead, it uses a cache. So the data, the files that were submitted to this uh, control are deleted after an hour automatically. Also, the upload extension comes with a field type, it comes with a type converter, and it uses a custom validator. So if you need one of those, look in there. And also, last thing we used to create Paper Tiger is the Sidecast Neo Symphony Mailer package, which comes with a send mail action and a factory to use Symphony Mailer inside of Neos. That's it. That's the current state of Sidecast Paper Tiger. And it currently is version 0.3. Uh, so it is not version 1 yet, but it already has a number you can refer to. So it is. Uh, something in between a prototype and the real release software. It will probably um, get version 1 soon, since uh, we will start using it soon ourselves. But you should think about whether or not you want to use it, because it is really hard to, uh, hard to replace. And also, we made no compromise in there regarding using our own dependencies. So it is, uh, this package is opinionated. And there are things that this package will probably never support. Since I personally don't like multi-step forms, there is no way Paper Tiger will do it. <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, also one thing that I probably will never 
integrate in there is dependencies between different form fields. So if you select this, then you also have to fill out that. Um, it is bad practice. And uh, also, if a form gets so complicated that you want such rules, it is a good point to say, OK, this should be an application now, or this should not be a form that your editor just clicks together. So by limiting the possible features of um, the form editor, you can define at which point development gets involved and should be involved. Because I have seen forms, and that is one that is because I was, or the reason why I was reluctant to create a form editor in the first place, where editors created way too complex forms with such tools. So keep those simple, whether or not you use Paper Tiger. If you do it on your own, keep it simple, so you still have a point where development gets asked to create the real complex stuff because that's what you want to do. So Paper Tiger is a tool to keep simple forms simple and not to create complex forms from editors. All the packages are open source, and everything in there that uh, could be useful separately without Paper Tiger is its own package. We did not bother to invent crazy names for those. So have fun. As much fun as is possible with forms. So as I, it is a really dry topic. Um, and this is what you get if you ask my children uh, to create a paper tiger. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin, for your talk. And also thank you for keeping in time, because we were hit with an avalanche of questions. Um, some, of them, <laughs> some of them you already answered throughout your talk. Maybe we'll bring them up anyways. We'll see. Do you want to start? I can start. So where does the field.names come from? Are those defined in the node types? Uh, the identifier you, uh, are you referring from? I think so. Yeah, those are the identifiers which have to be defined for every field. So that is why you had to define an identifier for a honeypot or the capture. So every node, one could fall back to the node identifier, but this is uh, what is probably between version 0.3 and 1.0. So those are the things we uh, would probably still change and uh, optimize so one can spare this, uh, the definition sometimes. But you have to define how to name a field. Of course. Thank you. What's the best practice to have one runtime form prototype with different forms? For example, one set of finisher for different forms. You can create components for that. So you can create a component for a form body and use it, or parts of a form body and uh, parts of schemas. So. That's what I would do. Also, something I would really like to explore is combining uh, some predefined parts. So creating maybe a contact form which has an address block and use things like Paper Tiger more like editors. You can add three or more fields together in addition to this fancy address block, um, but not to let them create the whole form. Right. So uh, I guess this answer, I, I could probably give myself, but can I use field values also in the email finishes? Field the, values, value. the values from the form, can I use them in the uh, You mean the labels that were assigned no, no, actually to? actually the values, or at least that's the question. I, I think that is what I demonstrated. I think so, so too. So if, you, right? if, you're, yeah. if you get the submitted values, I did not think about one, uh, whether or not you choose uh, Star Trek. Um, you might want to have, you, you got the uh, submitted value and you might want to look Read up the which, what the actual label was yeah. because that is what the user seen and used that in the email. I did not think about that yet. Could be achieved with labels, I guess. More yeah. You mean reply to field or? Yes, for example, if I can get the value. Yes, um, you, can, you can do that, uh, but uh, I did not enable it by, by default. Uh, you would have to apply the 
data template processor to the uh, reply to field, which I did not by default because uh, I think that is something you should think about before enabling uh, your form data to specify where an email is sent to, so that is something you should think about, but it is totally possible. So just uh, add this processor to the field in the email action. I think the next question is somewhat similar, but for the sake of keeping everybody involved here and not leaving anyone out, um, is it possible to use the placeholders in the email recipient of the email action? Same answer. Just yes. uh, it is uh, by default it is applied to the text and the subject, but of course it is meant to be used everywhere. Just do it with care. Right. So what does the honeypot do? The honeypot just has a validator that makes sure the field is empty. Right. So and the purpose is to honeypot. I mean, maybe. I just I just thought about for a hacker, for a hacker registration, it would be cool to uh, twist it around and to require it is actually filled. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Neos, but Neoscon registration yeah. in 2024. Yeah, but I, I thought about I better prepare the talk and uh, not mess with technical details. So. <laughs> All right, the next question um, was answered, and when it came in and I read it, I had a follow-up question in my mind that you already also answered, um, but maybe. So the question is, are multi-step forms easily achievable with your package? You already said no. My follow-up question would have been, what about conditional um, form input fields? You already said no to that too, but follow-up to the follow-up question of the things that you already answered. Um, so this is Paper Tiger, and it's all about simple forms. When do we expect Paper Cthulhu? Uh, <laughs> not, not from me, that, that for sure, because we created it already, uh, which was Sideguys, no, not the or it was Package Factory, Atomic Fusion Forms, and that was a thing that was way too complex and uh, used from editors as a first-level foot gun. Uh, that is why I really think that uh, editor-controlled forms should be simple. So um, I'm, I think that should not happen. Also, you can do it. You can you can use Paper Tiger as a template and do it on your own. It is not a technical limitation. Um, but uh, be warned, uh, editors are in that case. There is no there is no point at which they will come and ask for developers or technicians whether it is a good idea. So they can do all the stuff on their own, and they will. And uh, you will end up with some nasty surprises. <laughs> so better, better don't do it. You want, you want to talk with uh, your editors once, once forms get complicated. And you probably would want to create a UI application or even, uh, even a flow application if you want to ask very complex data and validate it. Uh, and you can do that by um, with, a, with a front end application much better and much more convenient for users. So uh, I think the, 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 time, the time of multi-step forms is gone. <laughs> uh, it, it was 10 years ago. And uh, it, um, statement. Maybe, maybe it is. Uh, can you tell my clients that? Only use case I can imagine are uh, German bu bu bureaucracy. <laughs> so, but I'm, I have no interest in doing that. So, but it is definitely not. It is not a technical uh, limitation. Uh, you, you can do it, but you have to do it on your own. Sec <laughs> Second to last question, and probably the most important. And if it hadn't come in, I would have asked you: Star Wars or Star Trek? I'm putting you on the spot uh, I here. Think, I think Star Trek. All right, and now to you, last question. Can I? Can you raise your hand if it is if the right answer should have been Star Wars? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, and if it should have been Star Trek? I think you have some new friends. Memorize those faces for the for the yeah, social I, event. I actually, I, I would be in trouble if I answered Star Wars because I work with Bernhard. So I just I just adopted a dog, and her birthday is May fourth next year. So I wasn't an any fan, but now I have to kind of because Star Wars Day and it's a thing now. Okay. Thank you so much. Can we have some more, a little bit of applause for this guy? <laughs>